This might be the most powerful build that I've played this season so far. It feels more powerful against bosses, more powerful against elites. Ball Lightning is back and it is in full effect. Let's freaking go, baby! Alright, I asked Mini not to attack here on the Ice Beast to see, you know, how long it would take for the Ice Beast to die because we want to kill the tormented bosses really quickly to get our loot. So I said, hey Mini, just don't attack. You know, Torment, Ice Beast, dead. GG. Alright, so we're going to take you through this quick pit. When I mean quick, look how quick this is about to be, guys. This is about to be the quickest pit. One on one pit that you could run because everything just flies to you and then dies. We could teleport pretty much every second, which is freaking awesome. Look at that. Look at the bar. Almost pulled up already, guys. Look at it. It's all coming to me. Wow. This is probably the funnest build. This is actually a build if you want to pit push that you want to try try and use. There's still gear that I don't even have that would make this even better. And this build is just insane. What the heck? <laughs> Was it? It's like a minute. You can get there in a minute, guys. You can get there in a minute. That's so funny. All right, white twist daggers. White twist daggers. Oh my gosh. It's so crazy. This build is so freaking fun. I love it. All right, let's go through the build. All right, time for the build now. So, first off, we're gonna be using Shaco. I think that this build can work with Vendarios. I gotta figure that out. First, we're trying it like this. We like to cool down reduction. Obviously, the armor is really good. And then the max health helps a ton. So, second, this is where you could make your own decision. So, I, I just used Rain of the Infinite. If you wanna feel more tanky, you can use Terrell's Might and Pure Ore Work. Tried both. They both are fine with this build. This one's a little bit more tanky. This one does a little more damage. All right, I have gravitational ball lightning spins around you on the gloves. These gloves are mediocre. These aren't even the skills you want. You want attack speed instead of intelligence because it makes ball lightning damage more. So you want critical strike chance. You want core skills. So these gloves could be upgraded a ton. You want to freeze with lucky hit, and you want crit strike damage. This is where the reason why you can use whatever chest you want because I do have the wild bolt aspect on here. So I'm actually pulling together with two different types of thing and doing more damage to them. Uh, I like warmth on there because it gives me health. I like chance to freeze. I, I brick these items. I didn't want chance to slow, but that's fine. Intelligence, max health and dodge chance are the best you can get. The thing why you want freeze is because we are using Horfrost in this build, so Horfrost makes you do more damage when they're frozen, so you kill enemies even faster. That's why we have it on the boots with intelligence, mana per second, ball lightning, chance to freeze, and evade reduction cooldown. And that is important because we are using teleport and chant, and then lucky it to get your ultimate uh, cooldown reduced, and that's very good too. Also, you want the inherit on here to be attacks reduced cooldown of evade by 1.5 seconds, and that's why I'm able to teleport around so much, which is fantastic. E weapon, you want intelligence, max life, and crit damage. All lightning, I uh, cast twice. That's what I would want everything to go into. So it's only 27% here. I, if I was to remake this item, I would want everything to go into chance for ball lightning to cast twice. The lightning spears are being casted so much because your ultimate is up. At first, I tried it without this and it still worked, but man, do even more damage with the lightning spear splintering aspect. So what I did is 
I made the Wild Bolt aspect do 10% more damage, took off Conceited, and added Lightning Spear, and I only lost 15% X damage, but Lightning Spear is causing so much more AoE damage, which feels so good in this build. You don't even need a Fractured Winter Glass to make it work. You just need something with the Viring Blaze, Conjure Mastery, Cooldown Reduction. If you can't get Cooldown Reduction, get Attack Speed, or if you can't get one of the the Conjure Masteries or Devour and Blaze get attack speed. Attack speed is really good in this build. Um, teleport cooldown reduction is meh. I'd rather have Evade, but that's fine. Uh, critical Strike damage is very good on this. Telrashas. Oh, also, and Storm Swell on the neck. Telrashas and Ring of Snake Star is so good because it's it's just doing that extra damage. It has core skills. It has attack speed, crit chance. This is just an amazing ring for this. I want a GA1 so bad, but this will do. And then on the focus, you want cooldown reduction, critical strike, and intelligence. Um, we want chance for ball lightning, and then we want critical strike damage. Also, we want aspect of the shredding blades on the focus. So let's look at the stats here. So my resistances aren't even maxed, and I feel strong. I'm, I'm not even maxed in here. We could play around the paragon point if we did want to. 64% critical strike chance, 12%, 1200, and this is why lightning spear as splintering aspect does very well the cooldown reduction is 69 percent and lucky hit chance is 51 percent because we are uh, utilizing a lot of the lucky hit in this build as well and we're getting an experience bonus of 278 percent no i'm just kidding actually what i could do is take out these gems <laughs> should uh, increase my resist we'll do that afterwards so i didn't even know that my resist wasn't max and i was not even dying at all so that is fantastic all right so let's get into the skills we're using fire bolts enchant and we're using teleport enchant light spear ice blades ice armor teleport ball lightning unstable currents literally teleport is always up in this build it's so cool all right so here's the build this is what i'm rocking with so we're just putting two points in we are getting devastation and elemental dominance that's extra damage this is more destructive charge bolts is for dr damage reduction which is important same thing with shimmering teleport we want glass cannon we got lots of ranks glass cannon now with the raiment of the infinite we want mystical ice armor because we want to chill and then we want to freeze as much as possible because we do more damage when we do that we do want all these mana shield and protection conjure mastery invoked lightning spear summon ice blades Bowering blaze 24 ranks to ball lighting this these boots are insane so this is gonna be probably the hardest piece to find in this build is these boots i would say so ball lightning on the boots minute per second on the boots and intelligence on the boots those are gonna be the hardest thing to find and then one point in the static discharge one point in the vigor and content it just feels good uh, that's what I was saying. One point into permafrost to get horror frost because we're doing 18 x damage. You've seen when I was fighting the boss in the pit when he staggered, he's dead, instantly dead. It's so good. We want electrocution for the extra damage reduction, and then we're using Beard's mastery. The paragon tree. This paragon tree looks a little goofy. We started off elementalist for the non-physical damage upgrades. 40 intelligence needed. We also went to frigid fate. Frigid fate it gives us more. Frigid fate board gives us more damage. 52x right currently so we could go up and then we get charged and then we just get out of here and we go into the elemental summoner elemental summoner is good because we want to keep as many conjures up as possible so we get a 20 percent duration here and then we also get a duration here and damage bonus and we are using the splintering aspect so it does support that as well um, we also want the attack speed nodes because ball lightning does more damage with attack speed so then we get out of here and then we go into exploit exploit is nice because you could put it in the enchantment master and get all these non-physical damage nodes which is fantastic i use pretty easy path too so you could like save a lot of points here which is nice and then you go into unleashed unleashed is good for the mana and a little bit of extra damage uh we we actually use a lot of mana in this build so it is helping out a ton after unleashed uh, unleashed was in the burning instinct we go into the ceaseless conduit board and we get destruction you always want to max out destruction pretty much any build so that is really good we like that and then we go into flame feeder 
from the Searing Heat. This is probably the shortest board you could actually get a rare node left activated. It's through decks. Is Searing Heat, so that's actually a really good board too. And then we're going to Static Surge, and then we want Adept so we can get the higher mastery damage. And then our area effect is increased by 20% as well. So that is feeling really, really good. It is eight, eight glyphs for reason. Eight glyphs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we're using eight glyphs, man. It's working. It feels strong, guys. Happy Labor Day. Hope you make the build. So let me know in the comments what you think, because I think this build is just the best. I think it's so good. I love it. All right, I'll guys, Ariel, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to Kelpkit for more videos. PTR is coming out in, what, two days, and you're going to want to come tune in. So we'll see you guys then. Bye.